All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about something that I haven't discussed before, but I think is worth knowing, especially if you too are a fan of hinders. This, in fact, might actually surprise quite a few of you unless you have some original OG hinders, but today I thought I would talk about the little secrets of an original Hinder XM18. Now what I mean by an original is the reasonably older schooled Hinders like this XM18 3 inch. These ones were, you know, 2010s to early 20 teens released. And these ones I think really helped build the brand and built them into what they are today. So, you know, things like my newer sixth gen um, Hinder XM18 three and a half inch here grew from this original guy. You'll also notice that um, I don't have my pivot on the correct side, so we will also be swapping that back around so that it looks more like a hinderer should. But before we do that, I think, like I said, it will be interesting to dig into this guy and talk about some of the interesting, fascinating things inside this hinder that I learned when I went to tune this one up. So without any further ado, guys, let's jump right into it and let's dismantle this XM18. All right, so for those who um, don't know how to dismantle these things, they can seem intimidating with the way that this screw is slotted. Now, like I said, I've dismantled this particular XM18 before, so I kind of have it set up in a way that I can more easily dismantle it. But if it's set up still kind of factory and it's hard to take or hold this pivot down, what you can do is take a smaller flat headed screwdriver, preferably want to wrap it in some kind of like bicycle inner tubing or something soft that won't damage your scale, especially if you have a, if you have a nice like titanium scale. But like I said, I've loosened this one so it's pretty easy for me to just put my thumb, like I put my thumb in this uh, notch here and then I just unscrew, right? Like just unscrew as you would. And um, like I said, once you kind of get these guys broken in, it's actually pretty easy because all you really need to at least take that blade out is a flat headed screwdriver because of this side. So you, you just have to hold down this kind of collar here. And um, yeah, so pretty easy, pretty basic. Um, nothing too crazy here, like I was saying. Um, so now let me just pull this pivot apart. It's worth noting too on these, sorry that I'm not speaking as much. It's worth noting these have very, very long screws because of that screw protrudes. Um, you know, it has a very long pivot screw and you can see there that that blade um, just fell right out of there. And that's because this is a very well broken in um, Hinder XM18. All right, guys, so now that we have the hinderer in pieces, as the Lord intended, let's talk about some of the very interesting parts of the hinderer, original Hinder XM18. So I'm gonna leave the elephant in the room for a little bit here, but let's talk about this blade. So first off, this blade honestly seems pretty good. Now on these original hinderers, unlike the more modern ones, like, you will see here, you'll notice that there is a screw on these more modern hinders, and that is because there is a lock bar insert. So you can see this differential in metals right here. So this lock bar is titanium, but the interface itself is um, steel. So it's hardened steel on hardened steel. And I really do value that because that promotes the longevity. And usually when you have steel interfacing with steel, there won't be this thing that they call galling. So what ends up happening, and I'm actually going to grab my Strider SNG for this, is that um, <clears throat> because you have two dissimilar metals in hardness, there will be this um, thing called galling. And that's what causes a lot of lock stick on your traditional like Chris Reeve knives, um, you know, Sabenzas, your Striders, even your modern Striders, like this is a modern SNG, has some lock stick and that's due to galling, which is like I said, when two um, dissimilar hardnesses of metal are, you know, essentially rubbing up against each other, it creates friction and that friction course creates um, lock stick. So this one, it's pretty minimal and I'm actually going to do a video taking apart the Strider SNG and showing you how you can minimize galling. But 
that is something that does occur, but um, that is usually mitigated by having a lock bar insert. However, on of course, original Hinder XM18s, as was the tradition back in the day, there was no uh, liner insert. In fact, Hinder, their kind of chief, um, maybe, you know, technology or feature that they brought to the table was the lock bar insert. So of course behind this clip you can see that and that over travel stop prevents you from hyper extending the lock bar, which was another thing that you could do with original um, Sebenzas and Chris Reeve knives. In fact, I think you still could potentially do it with new Chris Reeve Sebenzas because the Sebenza doesn't have any over travel stops. So hypothetically you could hyper extend and or break your lock bar if you did hyper extend it. So anyways, um, on these original ones, you'll notice that that is not present. However, on this one, you still have pretty good lock bar. Um, this one hasn't been actuated a lot, so the lock bar is in pretty good tact. Um, on one of my videos that I'll probably link in this video or like card, put a card up, it, I showed a titanium Emerson. It was my original 2009 Emerson um, Commander or Minicom. And you'll notice that this one, um, because it has a titanium lock bar and that titanium lock bar has seen a lot of use, you can see how far that titanium lock, lock bar has traveled. So it definitely, like I said in that video, and it's worth pointing out, whenever you have a you know titanium lock bar, if titanium is technically softer than hardened steel, so over the course of time, it will wear down. This one, like I said, is still in good shape. So yeah, overall, this guy is in pretty darn good shape. And I will probably pull down these um, handle screws just to show you, because I think I have everything backwards on this one. Yeah, I think I installed all the stuff originally backwards, so I will uh, correct that. But what I really wanted to talk about um, before we dig into the knife too much more is what really surprised me when I first took apart this darn Hinder. And that is that on original Hinder XM18s, and at least on the three inch versions, though I would say probably on the three and a half inch versions too, original Hinders used Teflon washers. You can tell these are Teflon washers for a few reasons. Unlike the Teflon washers used in Emerson knives, um, the, those are kind of like coated black, so it's kind of hard to see that they're Teflon or plastic, but these are just pure Teflon washers. Like they don't even try to conceal it. These are pure white Teflon washers. And like I was showing you too, Teflon washers are very distinct in, even if they are different colors, because companies will try to make them different colors to you know try to confuse people on what the material is. But uh, if they're white like this, they're definitely Teflon or ceramic, but this is obviously, um, plastic because it's very flexible and you can flex it and for the most part it will rebound. Now I'm not too worried about bending these things because they're once again plastic so they're pretty flexible but you know something like a, um, a phosphorus bronze washer would bend and stay in a bent position whereas these do not. They rebound after being you know flicked around. The other thing I have to say is these are remarkably thin thin washers, like of all the washers, even on like some of my Chinese, older, you know, kind of uh, older school Chinese knife um, builds like the Kershaw Emerson CQC6. That one runs on, you know, Teflon washers. These are remarkably thin washers. Like you can see there, these things are crazy thin. And on top of these being disappointing that they're Teflon washers, I think the other thing that's very disappointing or kind of Something that is indicative of Teflon washers is that without lubrication, um, these things are pretty, these knives are not very smooth. Like initially when I got this knife, I was wondering why, you know, it was just not a very smooth action. And I think that really the cause of that um, problem or the reason why this knife was not very smooth to begin with was these darn Teflon washers. Because that's one thing about Teflon is <clears throat> that yes, it is a very smooth surface, but it's also very prone to getting gunked up. And when it does get gunked up, as you can see here, it gets very sticky. And so when I pulled this knife down initially before I cleaned it, sharpened it, and gave it some TLC, um, it was very gunky. And that is one of the natures of, unfortunately, Teflon washers over something like phosphorus bronze. Is phosphorus bronze is a 
um, material that tends to get polished. Like that's kind of the difference between metal washers and plastic washers is plastic washers will wear in and get more sticky, more tacky, and potentially even break down. Whereas um, metals just in general, but um, you know, phosphorus bronze being one of them tends to be polished. So when you get material, you know, in there, um, you know, against your uh, metal slash metal on this, it really just polishes it and makes it smooth. That's why even though I'm not generally a fan of, you know, Benchmade, this very used old school Benchmade 940 is just absolutely, like you can see how hydraulically smooth this 940 is. And that's because once again, those phosphorus bronze washers have polished themselves against the steel. So in the steel and um, washers, if I was to pull this down, you would see that both materials are polished or polish each other um, through you know the act of moving against each other. And so that is one thing that is worth noting um, and why I think like if you do have an original hinderer, you might genuinely check your hinderer um, to see like if it's not running very smoothly, if it does have Teflon washers, you will need to add KPL or some form of a knife lubricant to help the process of gliding. Now, after I had some KPL and assembled it again, it worked actually the way I think it was intended to be. It was a very smooth, very nice action. And yeah, so I think it's very interesting to see a hinder, you, you know, like there's a certain level of, um, quality you'd expect out of these knives because a hinderer xm18 like this one that you see here is not by any means a cheap knife and so i think it's kind of unfortunate to see you know um, such a nice knife a knife that we would probably largely like pride ourselves on like saying oh this is a good knife you know you chose an expensive knife that's going to work well and then it ends up being a kind of uh it's kind of underwhelming at least in that regard so Anyways, I thought that would be an interesting little tidbit worth sharing. Um, other things that are n worth noting, I think, is I'm not a huge fan of originally these were given um, <clears throat> T6 Torx bits um, for their, you know, kind of uh, assembly. So that is not the thing that I am the largest fan of. And I think the biggest thing is whoever invented Torx bits, I think, needs to be permanently fired from wherever they were working. I'm sure they've probably already quit because Torx bits are one of the most fascinating things, especially in small use applications like this, um, you know, like making knives and stuff. And why I really dislike Torx bits a lot, even though they're seemingly very prominent, um, is that because of what a Torx bit is, there is incredibly not a lot of material on the outsides of the screw or like between each kind of bit in the screw. And so what ends up happening is that they end up tearing out quite easily, especially if there's any degree of torque being placed on that screw. So you'll see here, um, as you guys can probably tell, this is... Um, <clears throat> definitely um, one and in fact this screw actually right here is torn out so it is stripped out I'm going to have to uh, actually step up to a t7 to kind of bite it but uh, yeah it is not very cool and appreciated so as a quick aside as I was uh, disassembling this like I was saying this this screw is stripped out and as a quick um, kind of note in case anyone's wondering like how do I deal with a you know stripped out um, Torx bit. Like I was saying, I really hate Torx bits because especially T6 Torx bits tend to be the most strip happy because there's just not a lot of material on these actual lock faces or on these, not lock faces, but on these screw faces. Um, but if you ever do get to a point where you need to, you know, like just get one out, um, one thing I usually do is I'll take a bit of like rubber inner tubing from like a bicycle, like tire or something like that, just something cheap and disposable that's made out of rubber. And I will usually wrap whatever my um, like suspect screw is. And in this case, I find it pretty easy when dealing with knife handles that I usually just take like the uh, bit as you can see and just run it over but that will usually 
give you the ability to um, just get that little bit of extra grip that you need. So I was still using a T6 like Torx bit here and you know you just drive in or just jam in that rubber bit and that will get you usually what you need. So anyways that is um, just a quick trick if you need to like in a pinch remove a really hard to dislodge Torx bit. So let's continue dismantling this little knife. Um, this one's probably like, I, I really do like my three inch hinder as you can see, but uh, it is definitely an interesting knife. The other thing I find very interesting, and I'm not quite sure why this is, but the, uh, the inside of this is incredibly sticky. So I don't know if they were like trying to glue that together to make sure it wouldn't come apart, but uh, yeah, it is very sticky. So it's very interesting. Um, this hinder is really cool, has a lot of, you know, like good history and character to it. It is a very old school hinder, but uh, yeah, not necessarily my favorite through and through. But yeah, that's what the breakdown of an original hinderer looks like. Uh, it's worth noting, like I said, this is an original, so they have changed their processes a little bit. They don't use Teflon washers anymore. They use now like a uh, caged ceramic ball bearing setup, I believe, but for sure a ball bearing setup. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a little bit more high quality than these original guys, but uh, considering that most of these original ones were pretty darn handmade, I guess I'm not too surprised to see the Teflon washers. However, still kind of equally disappointing when you consider that these are not cheap knives in the slightest, especially these uh, original ones. So yeah, definitely interesting stuff here as my hardware tries to escape me, but hopefully enjoyed taking a look at this knife and seeing the insides of it and kind of my commentary while tearing it down and just taking a look at, like I said, some of the things like the use of Teflon washers on this, just very surprising to me and also slightly disappointing. So yeah, definitely a fascinating knife and one for the records. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm going to continue to get this guy all finished up as I drop everything. And uh, get this guy all finished up. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. As always, guys, God bless. And I'm out.